Good morning, sunshines. Today we're going to go through body defense mechanisms. So here we're going to look at the lines of defense, um, how we distinguish self from non-self, and then the problems of the immune system, some imbalances. The immune system is not so much an organ system as a functional system. You'll find immune cells in all of your different body systems working to protect you from pathogens, um, external um, disease-causing agents that have been taken in by your body, and then cancer cells, your own cells who have stopped undergoing regular cell division and go through it dramatically um, unregulated. So our body's immune system gives us resistance to disease. And there's two branches that work together, uh, the innate or nonspecific defense system and the adaptive. So the innate nonspecific works against everything. Anything foreign. So innate, these are all nonspecific. They work against anything foreign. And we'll look at why that makes sense in a little bit. Whereas the adaptive is lymphocytes that each individual cell only works against one specific antigen, one foreign molecule on one type of bacteria or virus or parasite. Each cell only works against one specific antigen, a foreign body that causes an immune response. Remember, antigen stands for antibody generator, so something we mount an immune response against. They only work against one molecule on the outside of those materials. So I like to keep a running list of the divisions of the immune system. So let's go immune system, and you're going to want to start this on a page that you have access to, and we'll add to it as we go through the parts. So we've got our innate, and that's going to have more branches and take up more space. And then we have the adaptive. Just putting it on the other side, leaving more space for the innate. So we'll go through the parts of the innate and how they function, and then the parts of the adaptive. So our innate defense has two branches, the first line of defense and the second line of defense. So the first is our external body membranes, our skin, our mucous membranes. So we've got these stratified layers of epithelium, lots of layers of cells thick to help protect and be a physical barrier. They're also going to have secretions that help with our immune response. And then the second line is internal. So anything inside that functions against foreign materials that have breached that first line. So we'll have a couple types of proteins, some cells that are eating, and some body responses. So let's add that to our growing list. So our innate, we've got defense and the second, Ooh, that is bad, line of defense. Okay, and so we'll add to these as we go. And the third line of defense is that adaptive, where it takes longer to get activated because you have to have it exposed, and then those cells that work against whatever you're sick with will start dividing and making copies and making a whole army that works against whatever particular illness you have. So first line, 
We've got the nonspecific physical barriers and their secretions. And then if they get past those barriers, they go into our second line of defense, our internal nonspecific defenses. So phagocytes that eat things, immune responses like uh, inflammation and fever. And then if the pathogen still survives, it's going to go into that third line where those specialized cells divide in our adaptive immune response to make a whole army of cells. Okay. So the other thing we can call the adaptive is the third line of defense. Okay, cool. Okay. So the first line of defense, we'll go through more specifics of these physical barriers. We've got stratified layers of cells, right? So epithelium, you've got tight junctions. There's a strong physical barrier. Tight junctions between cells. And then their secretions. So our skin is pretty fun. Uh, you'll have some lysozymes that help break things down. It's also slightly acidic. Being slightly acidic helps us uh, reduce the ability of bacteria and fungus to grow on our skin well. And then mucous membranes, so lining like our throat, our respiratory tract, obviously based on their name, they've got mucus, right? So these cells have cilia as shown here. And so those cilia are gonna move the mucus across in a wave-like motion, and anything that gets caught in the mucus is gonna go and be swallowed, swallowed and then broken down by your stomach acid. Mucus traps bacteria, pathogens, dust debris, etc. So in our first line, we'll put skin and mucous membranes. Those external physical barriers and their secretions, right? One, So this is showing more of those secretions, the chemical barriers, and fun ones. Your saliva helps move things across your mouth. There's also a little bit of cyanide in there that breaks down microbes, uh, bacteria. Okay, now let's move on to the second line of defense. So there are two types of cells in the second line of defense. Phagocytes, so remember, phago, eat. They engulf pathogens. So we can see a bacteria here in the branch off of that white blood cell coming in, and it's gonna grab it and break it down with its lysosomes. So they engulf them, they eat them, they recognize they're not us. And the other type of cell we have are natural killer cells. So natural killer cells are actually a type of lymphocyte. So remember lymphocytes, they have the lovely round nucleus that takes up almost the whole space there. We're not quite sure how they do this, but they look at our own cells, our own abnormal soft cells, and something on the membrane signals to them that the cell is no longer functioning properly. And so the natural killer cells will come and grab on and release um, these materials that will cause pores to form and the cell will die. So for example, cancer cells, they're our own cells. They're gonna have something on the membrane that 
the natural killer cells identify with. So here are two of those natural killer cells coming in and injecting their proteins that are going to break down this cancerous cell. So let's add those to our list. Choose a different color. So the first two are types of cells. We've got phagocytes that eat. And we've got the natural killer cells that attack our own abnormal cells. Now let's look at the second line's proteins that our body makes. First, we're going to look at interferons, or IFNs. So interferons are secreted by a cell that's infected by a virus. Some of our white blood cells will secrete these. So what happens is the virus takes over this host cell, and the host cell starts churning out little viruses. Right? It becomes a virus factory. It makes all the parts that they need. So this cell is gone, it's going to die. But it can warn other cells that aren't infected yet. And that's what the interferons do. So those interferons are released, these little red guys here, and they go to those other cells and they tell those cells to stop letting the virus in. And so they can warn them and not get infected. Or they can say, hey, if you've got viruses in there, break down, go through cell death, and it also will help activate our immune cells. It'll help those natural killer cells who will attack our own infected cells. So these are a warning. They warn other cells. Or in other cells of viral infections. So let's add those to our list. Interferons, IFNs, released during a viral infection. And then the other type of proteins we're going to look at are complement proteins. So complement proteins are always circulating around in your blood, inactive. There's like 20 of them. And they're just waiting for the signal to get started. So complement proteins do three things. First, they help mark those uh, foreign cells for phagocytosis so that the neutrophils, macrophages can come in and eat them better. Then they help stimulate inflammation, another part of the second line of defense. And the third thing they do that's really cool is they destroy pathogens. They form what's called the Membrane Attack Complex, or MAC. Membrane Attack Complex. And you can see pictures of what the MAC does here. Basically, those complement proteins come in together and form giant holes in the cells. Now, our own cells have um, anti-complement protein um, structures, so they don't attack us. But anything without that, like this bacterium, the complement proteins will insert and they'll make these giant pores. And water will flow in and the cells burst, they explode. So here's showing that in real life. Look at all those little pores on the bacteria. All these holes, water's going to rush in and then the cell explodes. So let's add to our list the complement proteins. And then let's look at the two different body responses. The most important body response is inflammation. So what inflammation is, is it's an increased blood flow to tissue. Increased blood flow to tissue. So what's going to happen then is more fluid and white blood cells into that area. So here you can see the capillaries getting leaky. White blood cells can move out of the blood into that tissue more easily. Okay. So this is the end of part one. We're gonna go on to part two next.